What's up guys, Mr. Lee Redman here with episode number 3 of the One League Team in Bristol series with Bristol City. I have now gone to the 11th game where I would normally break it up anyway. Because um, obviously I did an extra uh, video earlier with the, like, what do you call it in it, the transfer and all that. So what I'm going to do guys is I'm just going to go into this, there's only a couple of extra games. As you can see, the form hasn't really picked up. It's got a little bit better because I've actually won. But apart from that, it's not good at all. So, the last game was this one. A 2-0 defeat at Notts Forest. We lost 3-0 away at Norwich. Nathan Redmond scoring. Fernando Torres. That's right, guys. That is the Fernando Torres. I didn't actually realise it was him until I was looking two seconds ago, to be fair. And John Guadetti penalty. Um, we'll just have a look at Torres. I mean, he spent two um, two seasons on loan in Milan. Not too bad um, stats, to be fair. Uh, but now he's a <laughs> Norwich in a championship. He's actually on 36000 a week, which isn't too bad, to be fair. Well, I was quite shocked to see him there. We then beat Leeds 2-1 at home. Freeman, Christopher Olsen scoring for us. All this after Nicky Jose actually put Leeds 1-0 up. Roy Donny missed a penalty. Uh, but Freeman did score the rebound. We then lost 3-2 at West Ham. Um, Sacco and Zarate putting West Ham 2-0 up. And then Agar and Freeman. Freeman equalising with 60 seconds to go. But unfortunately Zarate then scored in added on time to give them a 3-2 win. We lost the 7 side derby at Cardiff 2-1. Uh, Rory Donnelly goal wasn't enough. Uh, Scott Malone and Joe Mason scoring for Cardiff. We lost 2-0 at home to Brighton. A my god, I can't even say that. Javerio De La Rosa, I think is how you say it. Double for Brighton, giving them a 2-0 win. We then got our second win of the season. 3-1 away at Bournemouth. Aidan Flint, Rory Donnelly and Luke Freeman scoring the three goals for us. Kyle Lafferty pulling one back for Bournemouth. And then the final game of this section was a 2-0 defeat at home to Burnley. Ashley Barnes and Lucas Jutvich. Djokovic, I think is how you say it, scoring for Burnley to give them the win. We are currently in the, coming to the end of another, um, uh, what you call it, window, international window, where we then come back with Charlton and Colchester. And then we got quite a few games at home, so hopefully these set of fixtures will be where I can hopefully pull out of the um, bottom three. And we got, I mean, it's not too bad because of the fact, as, you, as, as you'll see in these, in the, um, Tables. Well, I mean, we are only three points adrift to Cholton, and I do play them next. So, to be quite honest, I really can't afford to actually lose that. But um, I've got some winnable game games coming up, with followed by three back-to-back -back home games. So, um, hopefully, if I can pick up some points there, it'll do me good. I've including those games as actually Cardiff. So, hopefully, we'll get revenge in the derby there. Um, I don't think I actually. No, I didn't sign any more players. Did I? I can't remember. I know players have gone out on loan. Um, actually, there that's one transfer there, unfortunately. Um, my main striker, Rory Donnelly, kicked up a fuss. Um, and the team weren't happy with how I put it, how I did it. And um, basically, he just got a bit of a knob, to put it simply. So I um, said, I'll let him go when I can. And then as soon as I actually came out of that, um, interview or the team meeting with him or the players I had two bids one from Sheffield United one from Middlesbrough um, he's worth about 1.3 mil so I've got a actual deal which will give me an extra 200,000 unfortunately I only get 300,000 up front and then over half a million over the space of 12 months but the biggie is 625,000 if they get promoted and 20% percentage of profit from the next sell. Um, normally when I got transfers coming in for players that are not transfers and I don't want to get rid of, I normally want their value up front and I normally try to get quite a lot of money out of it but I'm finding a little bit tough to do it on this one. Um, but hopefully uh, we'll be able to we'll get our money in January and then uh, hopefully we'll be able to look at some players after that. I've got able replacement in Kieran Agard anyway. But I think I might need to 
look at attacking midfielders because they're not great at the moment and defenders maybe but hopefully money from that sale will be able to give me some money in January and be able to bump me up a little bit as you can see I've got just under 800,000 in the budget so the initial fee of 300,000 300, put me above a million anyway um, wouldn't surprise me if I have bids for some of my players during January anyway uh, but hopefully we can keep hold of them and um, keep it going uh, transfer history um, yeah oh no there's no extra players coming in quite a few loanies though going out um, to some of the lesser like lower league teams Joe Morrell actually is uh, one interest to keep an eye on though he's supposed to be in real life he's supposed to be quite he's supposed to be very good We'll have to see how that goes. Um, squad wise, uh, we'll have a look at the table a bit more actually, because I mean that's that's the table. So obviously, we're not doing too badly. We we'll have a look at the stats. I mean we're not doing too badly with bottom. That's a stupid comment really. Um, but um, we'll, as you can see, we're, we've got nothing really on there, which is not surprising. Um, I think my leading goal scorer is Patterson. Yeah, no, sorry, Donnelly. Sorry, not Patterson. Roy Donnelly with five. You got Freeman, who does seem to score quite a lot of goals on this game. He's in se he's second with four. I mean, every season I've done, he scored ten goals. You got fifteen there, fourteen there. Three this year. I think we we're supposed to rumored to have actually bought him for about two hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, but that's good because I mean he's a very good player in real life as well. He's he's the one player we all wanted in real life. Um, to get and we got him and he's been absolute quality for us um, Agard's on too but I could hopefully he'll pick up because he's going to obviously go up top once Donnelly goes he is also a full international with um, St Vincent and Grenadines as you can see there he's actually scored for them um, not actually too sure how many goals he scored though I think I said one actually um, not even too sure if he even plays to be honest anymore but um, yeah, well, they've, they've actually not done too badly in um, uh, competitions this year. Um, uh, what was I? Ever, what was I going to show you guys? It's going to be uh, yes, obviously, it's twenty sixteen. So we have just had the European Championships of twenty sixteen, which, as you can see, were won by England. I'm not actually going to lie, I was not aware of England winning that. Um, I just suddenly realised, as I was about to do this, that um, it was 2016. Uh, I think I've noticed some um, World Cup qualifiers going on, so I might show you quickly there. But you got obviously like France and Portugal, Austria, which is quite funny, um, Slovenia, Slovakia, Cyprus. I have to say, I'm in real life, I'm quite looking forward to. Um, this expansion of Euro Championship and just seeing some of the teams like Slovenia, Slovakia and all that lot making it and seeing how they go on. And if you have a look, England didn't do very well in the groups. Um, we got through, admittedly. Uh, I think we beat Ireland and drew with um, Spain and Sweden. And then obviously we got through to round two where we beat Italy 2-1. Quarter finals where we beat France by a goal. Semi finals we drew and beat Germany on pennies. Bloody hell. Take a screenshot out, I think, in a minute. And then beat uh, Switzerland 2 0. Um, don't know why I clicked it there, to be fair. So you got Danny Welbeck and Adam for Adam Forshaw. Hmm. It's interesting. Um, but yeah, actually, we'll have a look at the England team. We'll have a look at the England team there. you got Joe Hart, Flanagan, Jag, Stone, Shaw. Milner, Jesus, Henderson, Theo, Young, Gibbs, Welbeck, and on the bench you've got Forsall, James Rod James Ward Prowse. Um it's quite a decent squad. I'm quite looking at this because sometimes there's actually some random players out abroad. Raheem Sterling, who's he wanted by? Man City. Stupid question. Um so you've got Theo Walcott still Arsenal Will most of the players are still apart from James Ward Prowse who's in Man City now. Um, John S John Stones is at Chelsea. Charlie Austin. Well, wow, okay. Twenty seven. Really? I thought he's a lot older than that. Um, but yeah, there's no. There used to be every now and then. There used to be like um, one player that would be uh, some random team in Europe on these saves. Be quite interesting to see what happens next. The squad in next Euros. But as you can see, they're third in the World Cup qualifying section. 
Um, they've been Portugal, Latvia, Luxembourg. Who do they lose to? Slovenia. Random. Um, but yeah, we've got World Cup qualifiers going on at the moment. Um, what I think I might do, I think I was looking at this earlier actually. Um, quite a few of them have gone a couple of games through, so I think the next one I might go in a bit more depth maybe, or I might just wait to the end of the next season or something. But yeah, that is it for this episode, guys. Leave some likes, leave some comments, subscribe. Appreciate it all. Uh, tune in next time for a halfway season review where hopefully we will have improved enough to not be bottom of the table anymore. Um, I was thinking about doing another special actually at the end of January transfer window, but I think I won't this time. Um, but I, well, I might do. I'll see what happens. But um, until next time, guys, as always, take it steady.